Hey there folks, welcome to another update on an earthquake that occurred in Greece, just north of the island of Crete. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. The earthquake in question was about magnitude 6.1 to 6.2. We've got two different reports on magnitude, but definitely large enough that people in the region felt it. It occurred on May 22nd at about 6.19 a.m. local time. Uh, depth of the earthquake was about 64 kilometers. So let's go ahead and break this down and give you a little of information on this quake and talk about some possible implications here. So the quake in question occurred again in the Mediterranean uh, north of the island of Crete here. Uh, here's Greece, here's Crete, this is the Aegean Sea, and this is the earthquake in question. The USGS has it as a 6.2, but the local uh, regional seismic network has it as a 6.1, but either way, uh, definitely large enough for folks to feel. There was no uh, damage or injuries that I know of that were reported, and there was also no tsunami, and we'll look at why that would be the case here in a second. So let's go ahead and look at, at the some of the seismic analysis analysis of this quake and there's our good old beach ball so remember as we look at these uh, fault plane solutions and interpret them that we'll always see two lines uh, we'll have a circle and this is oriented with north upward and so this would be north over here would be west east and south and then there'll always be two well, planes or they'll show up as curves that bisect this projection here and in this case we have one plane that goes from the southwest to the northeast another plane that goes from the northwest to the southeast so one of those two was the fault that produced this earthquake and we usually have to use a little bit of uh, regional geologic knowledge or look at the aftershock sequence or something else to interpret which of those faults is the or like is the most likely one that produced the earthquake Notice that the pattern we see here with the two regions intersecting, this is pretty much a strike slip fault. It's a little bit of an oblique strike slip fault. It's what we would call an oblique reverse fault. So it's moving, it's caused by compression, uh, but there's a significant amount of sideways motion as well once you learned how to interpret these uh, types of uh, beach balls there. So um, let's look at a couple other things here. We'll come back to the beach ball here in a second. Let's go to uh, the did you feel it information and see here is the earthquake epicenter located where the star is here. And then you can see all the little boxes that show people's reports of this earthquake. So and the color here would indicate the level of shaking. So over here on Crete at this specific location, this grid, we have about 21 responses with an average intensity level of about a five. Um, it's fairly, you know, um, light damage, but strong enough shaking kind of moderate moderate level shaking. Uh, and then you can see, you know, some reports out here. Again, with these one responses ones, um, you know, hard to say if, how um, reliable those are, but definitely when you get over here and you see, you know, there's four responses, one there, three, uh, three, two, those are definitely, um, that's earthquake activity being felt at least out to this area here in Western Turkey. And then it looks like there were some reports across the Mediterranean around Cairo. And ag again, these re reports um, also, or this, uh, this data is dependent upon people feeling the earthquake and reporting it back to the USGS. And so uh, it's not a perfect data set, but it does give us some information about how strong the shaking was at different areas. Over here, uh, this is the island of uh, this is where Santorini is here and so you can see uh, a lot of the uh, the the shaking here uh, and the number of responses in that area as well um, let's go back to well let's look at the intensity scale so again up to magnitude or level five on the intensity scale which would be moderate shaking very light damage and we have no reports at least that i've heard of so far of any substantial damage that's been reported um you know looking at this quake in terms of why it occurred where it did we can start with this uh, simple tectonic map i put together here so here's the island of crete the earthquake today about this location right here so it's on the aegean sea plate uh, which is moving to the southwest and is colliding with the african plate which is moving nearly due north so this is a collisional boundary a subduction zone here with the red triangles but it's not a perfect head-on collision it's colliding at a 
little bit of an angle, and that's why we do see these strike slip faults and oblique faults occurring along with um, other, you know, purely up-down motion like reverse faults in the area. So that's just a rundown of what we have for uh, the tectonic setting of the area. Um, looking at the Greek seismic data, I think there's some interesting insights here. So here's Crete, uh, Santorini's up here. We're still getting uh, some of the uh, small earthquakes from that seismic swarm we had back in February. So those tiny earthquakes still, very small earthquakes still going on there. And those are likely to continue for months, if not years. But for the earthquake here in question, you can see the star. That's that 6.1. They have it as a 6.1 earthquake. Uh, and then you can see a number of aftershocks here, 3.1. Uh, and the red ones are the ones that have occurred uh, more recently in uh, the last hour maybe or so. Um, yeah, last 24 hours, excuse me. Uh, 3.1. Yeah, so lots of aftershocks here. But if we notice the orientation, there is a, a fairly significant orientation of these faults or these earthquakes, excuse me, in this sort of southwest northeast orientation. And if we go back to our beach ball, we can see that that jives pretty well with this fault plane here. So based on the aftershock sequence we're seeing, it seems most likely that this is the fault. This is the culprit that produced this earthquake. This uh, So that would make it then a, based on this orientation here, this would be a, right, a reverse fault that also has right lateral uh, component of motion. So it's a right lateral oblique fault uh, or reverse fault in that area. Again, based on the orientation of those aftershocks there. Um, again, sh just to make sure that uh, people don't get too alarmist about this thing, this is totally normal. This is exactly uh, the type of earthquake and the location of um, an earthquake of this size. This is totally expected. We've had several of these over the past few years. We had one just about a week ago that was west of Crete. It was about a 6.0. So this one you know, well within the norm, we have this active uh, plate boundary here. Um, I did pull up the, all. <laughs> this is a little bit overwhelming, but this is like uh, historic seismicity for, for the last hundred or so years. So you can see just all the earthquakes here. It's hard to even make out the island, but Crete sits right here. Uh, the earthquake today would have been about right here in terms of its location. So notice that the bulk of the quakes happen along that subduction zone in terms of absolute numbers, but also notice the size of the, the circles here, which is corresponding to the magnitudes. Uh, you'll see that a lot of the larger circles happen um, not necessarily along that subduction zone, but on the what we call the, the back arc area or behind the trench uh, in the, this part of the Aegean Seas. You can see some of these larger ones here and we can see their depth by color most of them are in the red so they're fairly shallow occasionally we get deeper ones today's earthquake again 64 or so kilometers uh, that probably helped it be less severe in terms of shaking at the surface because it was a little deeper than other quakes we've seen in the area and because this graphic was a little bit messy and a little hard to see what's going on uh, here's maybe a simpler one showing some historic earthquakes in the region and their little beach ball uh, focal mechanism solutions. And so again, today's quake was about here. Um, and so, you know, we don't see a lot of other quakes that have happened in the past. I think this is data since 2007, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to look that up. Um, but you can see that the bulk of the quakes tend to happen out here along the actual plate boundary and plate margin. But we do have, obviously, a significant number of earthquakes that occur in this, uh, in this back arc setting here in the Aegean um, where we're having extension. I've explained that in some of my previous videos. Uh, so for now, in terms of like, you know, I've, I've looked at some of the... Um, some of the news stories out there and some headlines on the internet and asking if it's safe to go there. I mean, safe is, is, a, is a bit of a subjective term. Um, I think there's a level of risk there, of course, because we have this active seismic area, this active plate boundary. So it really comes down to not just, not so much is there risk, there at 100% is risk of earthquakes in this region, but is it an acceptable risk? Uh, magnitude six quakes in this area would definitely 
get your attention you would feel them but these are not necessarily um, hazardous quakes to some degree now we have had quakes in the region that were of that magnitude that did cause building collapses and such but these um, ones out here in the in the ocean in the Aegean Sea um, maybe less they're not going to produce a tsunami in this case we had you know strike slip motion so that precluded tsunami generation as well um, so it's a bit of a loaded question um, I certainly if I had plans to go there I would probably stick with those plans I wouldn't let these earthquakes deter me but that's my decision personally based on uh, what I deem to be an acceptable risk it's just like driving a car everyone knows there's a risk of getting in a car crash in a car um, but most of us have uh, taken that risk on we've deemed it an acceptable risk and then we do things to mitigate the um, hazard and reduce the risk a little bit we drive defensively we follow the traffic uh, laws we put on a seatbelt, um, not driving while impaired those are things we do to minimize the risk but the risk is always there so just a little bit of perspective on this and I'll keep you posted if there's any other uh, information in the region that's noteworthy thanks for your time and take care